This video goes over the simple parts of code that you'll need to know in order to code robots in Botball. The first part is a comment, and there are two types of comments. There is a single line comment, and there is a multi-line comment. The single line comment just takes two forward slashes, and everything on the line will be commented. So no matter how much I put, it's all going to be commented. The second type is a multi-line comment, and everything on the line of the first one and between is going to be commented. So if you have a large amount of code that you want to comment out, all you have to do is you just do forward slash star, and then if you want to close it and stop it, you do star forward slash, like that. And all of these comments that I have here, if you would rather read the explanations for any of these, then you can just pause the video and read them. So the integer is a type of variable. And variables are really helpful because if you have a number in your code that is used a lot and it has to be the same, then instead of just writing that number over and over again, you can assign a variable to the number. And then if you want to change that number in your code, then you just change it right here. And you don't have to go through your code and change the number individually because it's stored right here. And so all you do is you say what type of variable it is. And these three are integer variables, which is just a number, a regular number. This is the name of the variable. It can be whatever you want. Make it descriptive so you know what it's for. And then you can stop there, and you don't have to give it a number. You can give it a number later, like this. You can say name equals 2, right? Or you can just put it all together. You can say the int name equals whatever, in this case 22, and in this case 1800. The next is the main function. It starts right here with this curly bracket. And it ends all the way down here with this curly bracket right here. So int main is the function that runs when you click run. So it's the only thing that runs in your code when you want to run your program. So anything that's inside of this function is going to run. It always has to be int and then main and then nothing goes in here. And then you have two curly brackets and you have a return down here. So when you make your... Um, your file for your program, it'll already be here. So you don't need to worry about it. Just know anything inside here is going to be run. Now we have um, the if, and we have the while, and we have the for, and the printf. And these are very important, and they come up a lot whenever you're making code, because it's, it's logic, and uh, the robots need logic in order to work really well. So the first is an if. All it does is when you run it, it just checks if this in here is true. If it is true, then it'll run this and then it'll exit and keep on going. If this is not true, it'll go to this else if and it'll check if that's true. If that is true, then it'll do this. If this isn't true, then it'll go to the else and it'll do this. The else doesn't need anything to check because if this isn't true, and if this isn't true, then it's just going to run this. Now, you don't have to have this if, else, if, and else. You can just have an if and an else, if that works, or you can just have an if. All this is going to do is if 1 equals 2, then it'll do this. And if it's not true, then it'll just exit. So... If you want just an else, then you can have this. So if this isn't true, then it'll just do something else. The while loop. It's really great because it just does whatever in here is in here over and over again while this is true. So I put a 1 in here, and encoding 1 always means true. And so this is called an infinite while loop. Now, if I wanted to put while like two equals equals three, then 
nothing in here will run because 2 never equals 3, so it'll just go out of it. The reason I put a double equals here is because in coding, a single equals and a double equals mean very different things. A single equals is assigning a number or whatever it is to a variable. An equals is checking if something equals something else. So that doesn't work. That does work because it's checking. The for loop is a, another type of loop. It's a little bit more complicated um, because it takes three things inside of its parentheses. The while loop is just checking whatever in here is true. The for loop runs whatever is in here for a certain amount of iterations or times it goes through. So the first thing is defining a counter variable. It just counts how many times the loop is run. The second thing is checking, is saying repeat this while the counter variable is less than or greater than or whatever 10. In this case, it's less than 10. And then this final thing says every time it loops, when it goes back and repeats, add whatever to i. And so what this specifically is going to do is it's going to start at 0, and it's going to go 0, it's going to run through, and then go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9, and then it's not going to go back. It's going to exit because if it went back again and added 1 to i, it would be 10, and 10 is not less than 10, and so it's going to exit. Now, it could be different. I could say this is 10, and while i is greater than 3, i minus 1. What this is going to do is it's going to start at 10, and while i is, now this should be greater, while i is greater than 3, then take one away from i. And so it's going to start at 10, and it's going to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and then it's going to exit. Because if it went back to 3, 3 is not greater than 3, and so it's going to go out. And whenever you just have this 1 right here, what you can do is a little shortcut. And it takes this right here, and you can just do i++ plus plus to add 1 to i every single time. Or you can do i minus equals 1, or i plus equals 1, right here. So this will take add 1 to i every single time, or it will subtract 1 to i. So this is a little shortcut. If you don't want to do that, that's okay. Just say i equals i plus whatever. So you could do plus 1, or you could do minus 1. It's up to you. The printf. It's really great because you can use printf for debugging. Like if your code isn't working and you're not sure what you did wrong, because it's usually you. It's it's not the robot. The robot's always doing what you tell it to do. <sighs> That's I found that out a lot. So the printf, it just prints whatever you want to the screen of the robot brain. And so you can actually put these anywhere inside your code. And whatever you want it to print, it'll print. It'll print text. It can print variables. Now, in the in Botball, in the brains in Botball, you don't have to. So, first of all, printf means print formatted. So this is great because you can you have a lot of control over how you print. And uh, the printf assumes that it's text right here. So all I have to do is I want to print text, and I'll just do uh, double um, double quotes. And I'll just put text in between. Ignore this for now, but this is helpful. So if I just wanted to do text, I would do that right there. And it would just print this twice. Now, what would happen is I would print this. And then instead of going to a new line, it would just print this right after that. So it would be a run on. So what I can do to make a new line is I can do backslash in backslash new line. And I can do both of them. So what's going to happen is it'll print this, and then it'll make a new line. So that when this runs, it'll be on a new line. So this will print twice, and they'll be on separate lines. Now, 
if you don't want to print text, you want to print a variable, you have to tell the printf what you want to print. Because if you just had this, it would give you an error because that's how it is. So if you add this, and I'll explain what this is, it will print correctly. So the first part, you have these double quotes, and inside of it, you have a percentage sign. And then for this, I have I. I stands for integer because I want to print an integer. If we go up here, we look variable is an integer. So I want to print an integer, so I'm going to say I. So what this is going to do is it's going to print 22 because variable equals 22. If I want to print something else, like print F, um, let's see. If I wanted to print number, then I just do percent I because I want to print an integer, and then I do number, and it would print uh, it would print 1800. So um, if you ever want to print any variables, then you just do this. It makes it really simple. And uh, there's text, and there are integers. So these are a lot of really important things. And what all of these have in common, except for if else, is they have semicolons. You need to have semicolons, if it's not commented, of course, on all of your code. You need to have semicolons at the end of the lines, or else it'll give you a bunch of errors when you go to compile it. And compiling just checks to make sure that all your syntax is correct, so that when the robot wants to read the code, then it'll understand what you're trying to get it to do. So, also, all of the code that you write, that it, all of the code that you write, except variables, it has to be in a function. Int main is a function, so it's okay that your code is in here, right? So, but these right here, they don't have to be in a function. They can be outside, but everything else, it has to be in a function. So these are a couple of simple things that if you know them, you can do a lot of different things. You can make a lot of different programs with these simple things. So there you have it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I will post some really helpful links in the description. So if you like to learn a different way, such as you'd rather read how to do all this, then there's a site for that. And I'll have the Wikipedia page for it and a bunch of other stuff. So there you go.